Now, as my time as a One Piece fan, I have been mad at many villains throughout the story, like Don Creek, man oh man, when he got fed and then attacked right away, his ungrateful ass got me mad. Or Mr. Three, who ruined the great long duel of Dory and Bragi. I won't lie to you guys, I was really pissed off at Mr. Three. Good thing he redeemed himself during Empel Down and further on. And then, of course, we have Spondum, who, let's be honest here, the fact that he was beating on a fan favorite in Nico Robin, that already was like a red card. And then, of course, during the flashback, what his involvement with Tom and Frankie and that entire flashback, yeah, he's a piece of shit. And then, of course, there's also Celestial Dragon who shot Hachi. That's probably one of the most saddest moments in One Piece for me when Hachi gets shot. So to see Luffy punch him was very satisfying. And then, of course, we even have Akainu. Though I just made an Akainu video talking really good about him, and I think he's one of my favorite characters who grew on me. Not like top 10 or anything, but I do enjoy him as a character. I must admit, when I first watched and read One Piece, a candle killing ace, that really gave me a bad, like, how to say this, yo. I, I was so satisfied when Whitebeard rage beat him up. And then, of course, Blackbeard for killing my goat Whitebeard and the way he did it, bro. And I, Blackbeard's my second favorite character. So the fact that I'm talking about Blackbeard here, I have to admit, yo, no villain is going to get the benefit of the doubt. If he pissed me off, he pissed me off. And then we have characters like post Task and Flampe, who was the, one of the surprise people that I hated, yo, who interrupted Luffy's fight with, of course, Katakuri, and then dissed her goat brother, Katakuri. Like, Katakuri is going to be your captain, and you're making fun of him just because of how his face looks? What a L. And then, of course, there's Orochi throughout Wano. Let's be honest here. There's so many reasons to hate Orochi. Like, he did definitely didn't made it hard for us to like him as a character, and the way we were so hyped to see the Shogun just for us to hate his guts. Hold on, man. You are one sick individual. And then, of course, Egghead Island has some pretty respectable antagonists, I'm being honest here. Like, characters like Rob Lucci, who even in this arc teamed up with Luffy to fight the Seraphim, or characters like Kizaru, who it's talked back to Saturn instead of actually listening and decided not to ignore Sentamaru and fly over him and actually challenge him to a duel because of the morals aspect of it. Like, you got to give respect to respect is due. But to me, Egger Allen, the character who I'm thinking I'm going to hate, just like these other characters in those moments, is going to be Saturn, yo. His actions are just too savage. And with me already having Celestial Dragon hate built up throughout the story, like, let's be honest here. Imagine Kuma's love and Bonnie's mother, two characters we thoroughly enjoy. Their Ginny got R worded by a Celestial Dragon, and that's the product of Bonnie. That's crazy. The Eastern Revolutionary Captain. Like, Dragon, what the hell are you doing, bro? Like, damn. But it's definitely something that happens in a war, but still, that's some sick stuff if I'm being completely honest. So, Saturn being a Celestial Dragon, I just can't wait for Nika to give him a punch right to the face. But let me explain how truly evil and satisfying Saturn's L is going to be by watching to the end of the video, because a lot of gems here. Like, when we first get Saturn's introduction, I'm not talking about those scenes of the Gorsi. That was nothing. Like, we were really reaching when we were looking at those scenes. I think Egghead Allen really began the Saturn hype. When like we see him getting tested for poison, his like his tea is getting tested for poison. That's how you knew Saturn thought he was better than anybody in this world. Like he thinks he's the best in this world. And Kizaro asks him, Have you ever met Vegapunk? Mind you, Kizaro is pretty cool with Vegapunk. Like his lasers are the reason why Pastoristas are able to do that. And Kuma himself are able to do that. The development is crazy. And Saturn says, I have once a long time ago, but I find this turn of events to be the most regrettable. Not because he likes Vegapunk. But the value he brought, showing how important hiding the void sentry is to, of course, uh, Saturn and the Gorosei. And it's revealed in this chapter that his name is Saint J. Garcia Saturn. So he, this is definitely a cool moment for Saturn in introducing his character. We also see in the beginning of Egghead Island arc that the Gorosei sent CP0 but expected resistance. So they sent Kizar an Admiral and, of course, their very own Saturn. That's crazy, the fact that an Admiral wasn't enough guy. They had to send Saturn as well, showing you how crazy this is, is in its entirety. That's how much they wanted to guarantee this mission was complete. And that's when I knew that Saturn was minimum Admiral level. And this is them not knowing that Yonko Luffy was coming as well. So that's just crazy. Now, in the middle of the Aiken Island arc, well, not really middle, but the beginning middle-ish, is where we first see a Gorosei attacked. And that is, of course, by Sabo with the Fire Fist. And... It was a true test of the Gorsei, because you have to think about it, the outcome of a Yonko commander. Let's be honest here, a Yonko commander going up against Sapo and he got low diff in Jesus Burgess. So to see the Gorsei tank that attack says a lot. Sabo even said he expected to take out all the Gorsei in one of that attack. So to see them transform and tank it, 
Because I was it was literally hell at the top of the world. And there were demon looking characters. And of course, we know that the grocery don't even want the people to see them. Like that's below Rear Admiral. So definitely thought it was very cool. And of course, they chased him after Wells, which was pretty funny to me. This them chasing Sabo and Cobra. That means they must be very confident in their power and ability. The fact that the Gorsi and Imu were chasing Sabo. Like these guys are monsters, and I can't wait to see them currently fight and a little bit them in the past fight, like maybe during Void Century. Hmm? And then, of course, we see the Gores say discussing Sabo, who has been affected by so many D. I know that sounds wrong, but you know what I mean when it comes to Monkey D Dragon and Monkey D Luffy and Portis D Ace and Monkey D Garp. And for all we know, like Kuma could be a D as well. And then, of course, there's obviously Cobra revealed to be a D Neftari D Cobra, so. Sabo has a lot of D around him, but let's be honest here. Sabo, Saturn says it. I really like to be finished with this egghead island business. So this stuff seems very light to Saturn while this is being discussed. You know, like all this looks just like very meticulous. Like he wants to get things done. Emu then says, "I want to use Vegapunk's Mother Flame," and Saturn says, "We will not know if it's real until we test it." Which makes me think, of course, that Frankie, of course, burning the Pluton's notes. Is this based on an ancient weapon, Uranus? Who knows? We've never seen it before. And is it located in the sky? The fact that we saw one of the flame was a sky ship, a sky weapon that destroyed an island. I do want to say it could be remind me of NL's Maxim ship. So there's definitely that. But it would be insane. Of course, Saturn then says that the result might influence the Egghead Island matter. Which, of course, now we're currently in the arc and it didn't. So it's pretty crazy how Vegapunk still is trying to get packed out by Kizaru and Saturn. And like, yeah, that didn't really affect things much. Saturn then tells Emu, we will take the necessary steps to make it so. Which makes sense because, of course, him being revealed to be the leader of science and defense. They literally called him a god figurehead of this department. So that's crazy. The fact that they're putting that much hype to Saturn. Which makes me think he might be use external science related weapons in the battle between what I, we all know what to, who's gonna fight monkey d luffy and then of course there's ivankov who uses very good logic by saying if the gorise are the top celestial dragons and the so-called descendants of god who else could lead over them than an immortal founder of the world government which of course nerona imu that makes me believe that maybe all six of these characters the five gorise and the one Emu could be from the Void Century. Though there is a counter argument to this. It could be only Emu is immortal and that's why he rules over the Gorse that has him superseding them. But also, wouldn't someone notice the Gorse are not like hiding figures? Emu is a hidden figure. The Gorse aren't. So wouldn't people notice the Gorse being alive since the Void Century? Like, wouldn't that be common knowledge throughout history, throughout the ages? We later on then see Saturn say, don't let them figure out that I'm here. He doesn't want them to know, the people on Egghead, that he's there. As a Gorse, who has ultimate control, of course, of the Seraphim, it makes sense. And he reacts to the fake news of Straw Hats being barricading themselves in with Vegapunk as prisoners. And of course, they, he finds out this is the work of Mor Morgans, Big News Morgans, and a lot of people have this theory of Morgans being a Gorsi member because of that silhouette that we saw recently. So that theory is going to run wild with Saturn liking Big News Morgans' article. But of course, we know that the Gorsi did not like his other articles. Now, I do want to say this. Saturn asks, what is the truth? And Dorman, who I think is a very significant vice admiral, but that's a whole another video for a whole other day, replies, we have not received mission complete from CP0 and Sentamaru is defending the island. So he definitely reveals some really valuable information to, of course, Saturn. Dorman again then says Saturn, it tells like, tells that the six Vegapunks are protected by the four Seraphims. He also tells Saturn that there's 10 Straw Hat members on the island and says that the three CP0 members in Raoluchi, Kaku, and Stussy have been captured by Sentamaru's Pacifista MK3 units. So Dorman is just dropping all the news to, of course, Saturn. And I do want to say this, I've always said Dorman is a significant Vice Admiral, and the fact that he's reporting to Saturn, and earlier it was Kizaru, I think of all the Marines there, it's Kizaru and then Dorman as the ranking. And of course, Saturn superseding all of them. Dorman also says that the front barrier is 100% like nothing can come in nothing can come out so saturn asks, where are the research and technician staff that work on egghead island this is a really good question and doberman says they all left but we know where their coordinates are we know where their ships are and saturn says if what if they know too much sink them this is how savage i'm telling you guys this is why i don't like saturn as a character look how evil he is like he's on some absolute justice here 
Then Doberman says the last thing that was uh, the last thing is that Bonnie's been sighted on the island, in which Saturn says Kuma's daughter, yeah, just leave her. She's just a girl and has no benefit to use. And I'm thinking, what is the benefit she had before? Was it her age age fruit? Because we don't know how she ate it. Recently, we found out she ate it, but we didn't see her eat it. Maybe it was she fed that as a baby and she was trying to develop to help the Gorsei when it comes to making them young. I don't know. There's so many theories when it comes to Bonnie and the Gorsei and what that is. But now we know that Saturn literally has Bonnie in his hands and he wants to pack her out. Later on, we would see York, one of the Vegapunks, cry to be saved before Luffy kills her to the Gorsei. And you see all the Gorsei shocked. And then, of course, even Saturn says, what? Like, that's how shocked he is. Of course, it makes sense. He's there. The Gorsei aren't. So he would be more shocked. He thought he got all the information, but that was definitely some new information for Saturn. Saturn then moves quick in his deduction, saying that York's safety is important. Punk Records is important. We're going to get that through York. And, of course, the power station from Mother Flame. The rest can be sacrificed if necessary. That's how savage Saturn is, yo. He doesn't care. He can sacrifice anything as long as it's important. It's not gonna get sacrificed. And this is where Doberman gets my respect because he does the same similar thing that what Kizaru did in this arc. He stands up to Saturn. He says, reacts by saying, What about CP0? What about the Cypherful agents there that are captured? Like, we can't just sacrifice them. And that's when Saturn says, and I got chills when he said this, I'm only stating the worst case scenario. Don't lose sight on what's important. Which Doberman says, Yes, sir. Of course, he's under the Saturn. He's gonna get killed if he doesn't say yes, sir. And then we get a spooky message from Saturn saying, human life holds no more value than an insect. We've seen this with CP0 guys and the whole sacrifice during, of course, the Kata Luffy fight and how they sacrificed their best agent just to kill Luffy. They will sacrifice anybody guys for their goals. And then he says, no matter how far they get, of course, dwindled, it's always possible for them to multiply. Which again is a crazy concept. It makes me think he could be, of course, immortal. And it makes me think he's talking about the Will of D, how they were so much back in the Void Century. And then, of course, they dwindle now they're coming back and they're multiplying. And that could be a big return of the Will of D recently since the Void Century. And now it makes you think is Saturn immortal? Is he immortal? Like, I'm going back and forth. I'm really like fence sitting right now. I'm 50 50, guys. Saturn then says, Did you hear Porcelino? He didn't say Kizaru, he said Marcelino. So this is a very intimate conversation between these two characters. And Kizaru says, sure did. Sha had talked a big game earlier, but it sounds like they're trapped. And Saturn replies, the Frontier Dome is a laser-based defense system. Think you can get through? Just ask him a genuine question. And Kizaru says, of course I can. Just got to deal with my guy who's standing by Vegapunk. So Kizaru was pretty much telling something that goes strictly against... Saturn, like, this is not important to Saturn. Like, Kizaru's saying, yeah, I gotta deal with Sinamaru, but Saturn's thinking, what? And that's where we see one of the best moments in Egghead Island. Saturn says this, fly over him. It's so quick, it's so concise, it's so demanding, and he's just bossing around an admiral with ease. And it's even more wilder because Kizaru replies, after he resolved putting his life on the line, that would be spitting in his face. Now, this is a Kizaru, the man who I've never seen Kizaru with any morals throughout the story. He has no morals. So the fact that he brings up morals now against Saturn was so legendary. And this is where it's even crazy because he says this, let me do this my own way with respect. So that's what he, he's talking back to Saturn and that's crazy. And then he uses logic by saying the sea beast and the 50 pacifistas would just sink our ships if I flew over him, causing so much casualties on our side. So Saturn just frustrated because first it was the morals, then it was the logic. Saturn doesn't know what to do and he's frustrated and he says pretty much that he doesn't want this battle to be drawn out and he asks for the location of the power station. He just needs something at this point and Kizaru gives him of course the, all the information and he says pretty much Rob Luigi is a great agent. So I thought this moment was one of the best moments in Aiken Island arc honestly. It was such a valuable moment to see this interaction between an admiral and a Gorsi member. And as Kizaru regains control of the chip of the pacifistas, he gets them to attack the sea beast. And Saturn says it easily, yo. He says, it's a shame, but if we can only keep one, I choose the pacifista. And this is deeper meaning because, of course, the last chapter when it comes to Kuma and how the pacifistas became to be and the name and whatnot. So, and Saturn was eavesdropping. So, this is so messy, guys. This is intense. And then, of course, we quite literally see the moment that Saturn is fed up is when Vegapunk orders the pacifistas to defeat all the navies. In my opinion, this is the moment that Saturn said, okay, I'm not going to sit around. I'm actually gonna do something. Shia LaBeouf, just do it. In my opinion, these next two chapters, chapter first, chapter 1094, the main fights cease to exist. Well, not really cease, but they stop at a moment because Kizaru, Luffy, Zoro, and Luchi react to it. 
And Jinbei states it's an ominous presence. And the Vice Admiral says, don't tell me. And yes, Saturn is there. Saturn says, pacifistas, everyone stop immediately. And a magic circle comes out on some demon shit, which was very scary to me. I got chills when I saw this. I was like, what the fuck is this, guys? And all the Marines are alerted on Saturn's arrival. And all the Marine commodores and below are, are said not to gaze, of course. Transgressors will be, of course, not forgiven. So this is some spooky stuff right here. And Sanji notices something coming out of the magic circle on some demon shit. And Saturn just one shot kills a Marine who's staring at him, who's a low-level Marine. Head taps him on some Lee and Edward stuff. As he says, I can't remember the last time I came to the surface. And he's in an awakened state. And this is crazy. Like this crazy smoke form awakened states around him. And Kizaru gets packed out at the same time Saturn arrives. And Saturn sees Nika who does the packing of Kizaru. Like he has history with Joy Boy. Like he's from the Voice Century. That's why I keep going back and forth if he's immortal. And then of course Saturn towers over Frankie. Like he's such a, like he's big mom size. Or even bigger guys. He's intensely big as mythical zone form. And it's crazy because it's he's even bigger than of course like like you see the Vegapunk, the pretty big Vegapunk that he's towering over as well. And Vegapunk assumes Saint Saturn, and Saturn says, I see you have managed to cling on to life. And we see Saturn, who's one of the most like let's be honest here, who wanted Kuma's brain wiped out and did so much bad things to Kuma in his life. And Bonnie just goes crazy and stabs him in an epic panel to end off chapter 1094. So this first chapter is where we really see how menacing Saturn is, in my opinion. Now, chapter 1095 is a little different. You know? This is where we see how evil Saturn is. Because he starts off in the announcement with no Marines under rear admirals are allowed to look at Saturn. Like, it's him who doesn't want to be looked. It's not like it's automatic. You get one head tap. It's more so Saturn sees you look at him and he's going to kill you if you're a low-level Marine. Like, he doesn't want that out there in the world. That's how I seen it, honestly, which is crazy. Now I'm thinking, is there some sort of conduct code or like sign in ritual you have to do to become a rear admiral? Who knows? Now, I also want to say this when it comes to how low key Saturn is. And as the vice admirals react to Bonnie stabbing Saturn, he tells them to shut the hell up, Megan. So he's just talking shit to the vice admirals and says, These are vice admirals for goodness sakes, and says, If I wanted not to be stabbed, I would have simply dodged, which is one of the most iconic lines in Aiken Island. And then he goes on to head tap Bonnie, who's a worst generation captain at the end of the day. I know she's a little girl, but she's still a very powerful character. And then goes on to want to head tap Yonko Commander that's worth a billion berries, the third strongest straw hat pirate in Sanji, who just defeated Queen, guys. And Sanji, yeah, he tanked it a little bit better than Bonnie, but still, he's damaged by Saturn's like secret move. As it's crazy because Saturn also heals his wounds at the same time as he takes Bonnie's sword out. And it's crazy because. I don't know how, like, I don't know how he's able to do this. It's pretty crazy. And then he tells the navies, and this was pretty crazy. He says, fools, just hold your weapons. And then he says, they're trapped. You don't have to panic. It, the way he talks to the vice admirals, like, there's some sort of kids. And then, of course, Saturn scolds Kizaru and Admiral for being so slow. The fastest character in One Piece, he scolds him for being slow. I ain't never seen you struggle like this. And then he looks at Luffy and says, given the circumstances, I can understand this disappointment. So he's pretty much saying, I'm going to give you an excuse, but I'm still disappointed. Bro, it's a Yonko, bro. Cut some Kizaru some slack. Like, come on, bro. That's why I want Luffy to punch this guy in the face, guys. I'm telling you right now, this chapter really did it for me, guys. And then, of course, this is where it gets interesting because he goes to kill Luffy right away. And then Frankie comes out of nowhere and Frankie does his strong right and saves him. And Saturn says, oh, you got a loyal crew. And Frankie says, even the big shots want our captain head, which got me hyped because Frankie's gassing Luffy. Then Saturn says Luffy and Bonnie's involvement wasn't foreseen. However, the coast blockaded by the army, it would be something to see you escape from such a hopeless situation. Let's see what fate has in store for you. So he's pretty much saying that they have no chance of escaping and he's just being cocky, which he should be. He's a villain, for goodness sake, that's going up against a Yonko. Which, honestly, I don't blame him for his powers that he showcased in the last two chapters in 194 and 195. And then he says, Vegapunk, your portrayal is a heavy blow, but I'm grateful for all your contributions. So we see some sort of, like, how to say this, morals of this character where he's still going to be grateful, but he's so evil at the same time. And then he goes savage, saying, which of you are first to die? I want the cruelest order for going against the world government. This is the evil side of Saturn. And then he says, human nature is to blame. Why must people be tempted by such things that have been forbidden? 
humans love haram that's pretty much what he was saying the humans love haram and sanji and frankie there's some sort of power some force that these are some of the strong characters in the stride pirates who can't even move they're completely pinned down by saturn's aura guys that's how powerful he is like what is saturn and then bonnie says saturn you killed my father and saturn says oh kuma he was born to be a slave committed a grave sin against the world the buccaneer race so saturn is just doubled down on everything he's saying this crazy speech is so deep and profound and it's also so evil at the same time like there's a mix of emotions in the entire 195 1095 chapter now the next time we would see of course saturn is the god valley flashback where we see a cp agent tells him of course that the buccaneer brat has escaped showing how important kuma and saturn are connected throughout the story guys and we're in the kuma flashback too guys and then of course in chapter 1096 during the god valley flash uh, flashback in the beginning of the kuma past kuma gets of course head tapped by saturn's crazy move the only difference though here is that he's in his human form so it seems like saturn can do it in his human form or his mythical zone form which is intense and then this is where it gets interesting because pretty much saturn says your options are slavery or death history chose that for you that's crazy kuma says you are born important and i'm born a slave it doesn't make sense kuma tells saturn the gorse the top guy of the world government i want to be like mika and save as many unfortunate people as i can which of course this is crazy in my opinion because you're pretty much saying automatic death by bringing up nika to uh, saturn saturn hates nika for mentioning joy boy from the void century and saturn says which is why you people will always vanish for good and then it cuts away and we see Roger and Rock's dialogue. So I'm thinking, did they have something to do with Kuma being able to escape Saturn's wrath in that moment? And will we see the Gorosei Saturn in his mythical zone form versus Rock's? That would be hype. And then, of course, the last chapter, we see Saturn and he hears the news of the new Sorbet King, which, of course, we all know would be Kuma. And it looks like Kuma is one of Saturn's top ops, this buccaneer. And then Saturn says that, Vega, says that Vegapunk's a fool for how he's using the weapon patch vistas and how they're valued and how many people they can kill and he says i have my own idea so saturn really is taking the driving wheel and he's so connected to these characters that it just makes me think yep that's right this entire video the reason why i brought up all these saturn moments throughout the akad island arc is because i think kuma escaping the fleet admiral akainu to confront saturn with bonnie life being on the line would be one of the greatest moments in one piece in chapter 1100 i think it would just be iconic and then of course nika being there as well who of course we all know the connection between saturn and nika and then vegapunk also there to assist like it can make one of the greatest l's for saturn the first course to lose and the final saga to begin its final war in the one piece story chapter 1100 is gonna be monumental i don't think it'll be dragon versus saturn i think it'll be kuma versus saturn and nika versus saturn and after that maybe vagabond can assist on the sidelines but expect some casualties i wouldn't be surprised if kuma officially is put down to rest i wouldn't be surprised if vagabond is officially put down to rest but i think this could be a good moment for the course first course to fall on saturn this demon to luffy and it can start a lot of uh, chain reaction to events. The Egghead Island incident is going to be one for us to witness. And it'll be a shocking thing. And I think it'll just be legendary.